Walk with History today is at the Wright Brothers Visitor Center, where the first flight took place in Kill Devils Hills, North Carolina. So what is here is a monument. We're going to walk up to the Wright Brothers Monument, and then they have a flight path. Um, they had they took four flights that day actually the first one 12 seconds the second one third one and the fourth one was the longest one all of them on december 17th 1903. so we're going to go walk out there the visitor center is here they have reconstructed hangars here when they made this flight no town was here this town didn't um, come into place until the 1960s so this was nothing out here and they came out here for the winds but this is where we'll walk today and we'll talk about it. And it's so awesome to be a naval aviator and to be here. I was actually commissioned December 17th, 1999. So 22 years ago, I was commissioned into the military on the anniversary of flight, not knowing at the time I was going to be a naval aviator, but I had hopes of it and I did it. <laughs> Orville and Wilbur Wright, no middle names. Two of seven children, their parents did not give them middle names, but gave them very unique first names. Father was a pastor, neither of them ever married, and they were bicycle machinists, and they decided to come out here and make the first glider man-powered aircraft. They have a recreation of the plane here in the Wright Flyer. December 17th, 1903, 40 feet, four inches long, 605 pounds. Um, a lot of the mechanics from bicycles. This is powered flight, so this is heavier than air flight. That's kind of what this was all about. In aviation, you know, we learned the basic principles of flying, so, you know, lift, drag, and they did the same, they had the same basic equations, which is really cool. The actual Wilbur, the actual Wright Flyer is in the Smithsonian. <clears throat> After it flew on December 17th, 1903, it never flew again, and it was actually given it was actually fixed and then hung in a hangar. And then what happened was it was given to a museum in Europe and then the Smithsonian eventually got it. So today you'll find the original one in the Smithsonian. So outside of this back room where the right the reconstruction right flyer is, is these boulders that show where the flights took place. So you have the initial boulder there with the, where they took off for four flights. The first marker is the first flight 10 35 a.m 12 seconds 120 feet the second one 11 20 a.m 175 feet 12 seconds the third one 11 40 a.m 200 feet 15 seconds and then the fourth marker is way down here and that's the fourth and final flight 12 p.m 852 feet and 59 seconds, so almost one minute. There were five people here that day that watched it happen. Um, one was a young kid, 16 years old. He's the one who sends the telegraph out to let people know that the first flight happened. And there are some um, taking the picture. The first flight, Wilbur stands at the right, that famous picture. But outside this window here is where those flights took place. So we're going to go out and walk them from Dayton, Ohio. So that's why there's a base in Dayton, Ohio, an Air Force base, and that's why they say the birth of aviation is in Dayton, Ohio, because they're from Dayton, Ohio. So it's very cool to be out here as a 
as a naval aviator. This story, this event is something every pilot holds dear in their heart. Every pilot knows about the Wright brothers' first flight. And I even did an air show in Dayton, Ohio when I was a student pilot. And that was like the biggest air show because again, birthplace of aviation. But to be here for the first time is amazing. Wilbur and Orville, right? What is that? Join Walk with History? Okay. The reconstructed hangars where they built their aircraft using the ideas that they knew from bicycle building. And they made an air tunnel in Dayton, Ohio. So they knew what would happen and they had practiced it. But these are recreation of what that looked like. So Orville takes the first flight and it's Wilbur who's watching. Uh, Orville will be, will be the one to fly from this boulder to the first one. 25 years later, Amelia Earhart will be out here with Orville to commemorate this boulder. So Amelia Earhart, this is 1928. So of course, before she's lost at sea in 1931, but um, yeah, so they're out here to commemorate this boulder. And then this is the flight path. walking path of the, the four flights that happened that day. Again, that big boulder that was commemorated in 1928, so 25 years ever. This is the first flight. Orville, they're gonna switch off. Wilbur and Orville will switch off during the flights, but the first one was Orville. This is the famous one, 12 seconds. And then they're gonna go all the way back to that initial boulder. So every time they go back to the initial boulder and then start off again. And then Wilbur is the second pilot. So the famous picture is Wilbur standing, Orville's flying. The second flight, Wilbur will fly. And again, 12 seconds, 175 feet. They start from that boulder again. Then for the third flight, they're gonna go back to that beginning boulder and they're gonna take off for a third time. This one is gonna be 15 seconds, 200 feet, Orville. So again, switching off, Orville, Wilbur, Orville. The last one, the long one is Wilbur. And this is cool, <laughs> like, this is what pilots want to fly down, right? P pilots want to fly down this flight path because this is original flight. When you think about it, in a hundred years, what has aviation done? It's just amazing. So what will aviation do in the next hundred years? But most pilots, and you can get um, clearance to fly down this. Most pilots want to fly down this flight path because it's, it's so monumentous, it's so important. It's the first ones to do it. So it's just so awesome to be here and to be able to do this. As a pilot to be able to share this with my family, it just means a lot. There's Scott out there with Madison and Tanner, and here's Jackson bringing up the rear. It just means a lot to be out here and to be able to do this as a family and to be someplace that for me is just so important. marker for the last flight you want the wind in front of you because it's going to provide lift as you hit the wind it lifts you up so that's where you can feel the wind coming off of it is very windy here and i can feel the wind straight on so this is where the fourth flight took place 59 seconds again all the way from the beginning from that first boulder 852 feet and this was wilbur so orville's first then wilbur then Orville, then Wilbur. So in that famous photograph, the, the brother standing is the one who does the last flight. So we're walking up to the monument here. This is the Wright Brothers Monument, 60 foot monument. And it's on top of Kill Devil Hill. 
so, you know, this is Kill Devil Hill, so Kill Devil Hill. And this commemorates all the gliders before the first powered flight. So all there's tons of gliders that take off from here, and that's what this commemorates. But the Wright brothers did the first powered flight. So, but that's why they picked this area, is because so many gliders could be so efficient here. So they thought if we could give ourselves a little bit of help with our first powered flight, here why we are not? at the top of this Kill Devil Hill. And again, the flight path, see those hangers, those gray hangers out there? The boulder is right adjacent to it and the flight path goes off to the right. That's just a walkway walking up here to this, but you can see we're right off the coast, right? In the Outer Banks. Like we are right off the coast. And then this says this was erected by Congress, 1928, dedicated 1932. 1928 was 25 years after the first flight and then 1932. It's almost 30 years after the first flight. It looks almost like a, a wing, one wing of a bird. Genius achieved by dauntless resolution and unconquerable faith. is behind the big marker, right? So the big marker there, it says Wilbur Wright, Orville Wright. So William Tate, the Kitty Hawk Postmaster, invited them out here. And that is, they took him up on his hospitality for the wind and the sand. What is that, Wilbur? Don't forget to subscribe to Walk With History. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, look, your brother, he's making the first flight. It's amazing. John T. Daniels, W.S. Doe, A.D. Etheridge, W.C. Brinkley, and Johnny Moore of Nags Head. That's all the people who were here. So, like I said, there are six people who are here when, this, when these flights take place, the four flights, right? The one, the first one is the groundbreaking one, the one that changed the world. But the people that are here, so this monument commemorates that first flight, that 12 second flight, that one that happened at 10.30 a.m. So here you can see Orville balanced, right? Right in the middle of the biplane, right? With the fabric. And then Wilbur is out here probably helping. They're on that straight piece of metal for the balance and Wilbur's probably helped balancing it so it can be caught by the wind to get it into the air and get the propellers to give it some power and to get it in motion. And then you got the four other people watching. So remember, six people in total, right? So one is Johnny and then the life saving station worker and then the two other people that are here. The famous photograph which you see with Wilbur and Orville with the right flyer. And like I said, we're all just down the hill from the monument. As a naval aviator, as someone who has really defined themselves as a pilot for a long time, to be here really fills my heart with joy. And as a historian, to know that these two individuals really just had such passion and dreams and innovation to do this. So I am very honored to be here today. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this Walk With History. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We bring new content to our viewers all the time and just tell you about really cool historic places and the people who made those events happen. So, on to my next walk with this week.